Hello and welcome to the tutorial of the Adaptive Map Tool. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to explain what the Adaptive Map Tool is and give you a short demonstration on how to use it. Uh, I'm, I'll be your narrator. My name is Jacob Moore. I'm a graduate student working with this project. So, um, if you go to the Adaptive Map page, this is what you should see. Uh, you're going to have the title at the top. This window here is the main area we're going to be working in. Um, below that, we've got an explanation of what the tool is, how to use the tool, and a troubleshooting page if you happen to be having any trouble with the software. So before we begin, uh, we're going to answer the question, what is the adaptive map? Uh, well, the adaptive map is a way to organize and link content information together. Um, so textbook sections, websites, lecture notes, um, anything you can get in a digital form um, you can organize into a coherent whole, whole with this tool. Um, so this has been organized together by an expert in the area and should represent a complete view of the course with different uh, sources of content. So here, up here, we've got two sources of content. So this is a Wolfram Alpha page um, telling you how to invert matrices. Um, this is another page that I've created by myself. Um, this looks like a textbook section. Um, this is explaining what the method of joints is, how to use the method, and gives you some worked examples. Um, so together this is going to form kind of a, um, a textbook for the course. And you can think about the adaptive map as the new and improved table of contents for this. So let's go ahead and start the tool. And we're going to start in the overview. This is what pops up first. So in the adaptive map tool, um, you've got the overview of everything in statics here. Um, at the top, you've got the more basic ideas, forces, moments, uh, vector and matrix mass. So there's a lot of information up here that's kind of the introductory information. Static equilibrium here in the middle is the uh, meat of the course. Um, that's what you're going to be using in a lot of these other. And towards the bottom, you've got the information that's usually talked about later in the course. So multi-component assemblies, flexible cables, friction, all that information is kind of later in the, in the course. So in the overview, each of these nodes represents a cluster of ideas. Um, it's a, a couple of these content pages I showed you before. So with each of the clusters, we're going to get more detailed information. But for now, each of these would be the equivalent of like a chapter in your textbook. Um, and to navigate around in any of the views, um, you can do a few things. You can pan. Um, if you click and hold anywhere in the background, you can kind of drag around the whole uh, image. If you use your scroll wheel, you can zoom, zoom in and out. And if you click on any one of these nodes, you'll see that the view centers on that. So let's go ahead and we've got the overview um, that has these different chapters. Um, you also notice you've got links um, and the thickness of the link indicates how closely these two clusters of ideas are related. So you can see that vector and matrix math is very um, lightly related to work and energy, um, but that static equilibrium and multi-component assemblies, there's a lot of links between the ideas in these two chapters. So let's go ahead and zoom in to multi-component assemblies. We zoom in eventually, it'll switch to the cluster view. So you'll notice that the background color has changed uh, to match that original, uh, the color of the cluster, and that all of the idea nodes within this cluster have the same color as that original cluster. Um, this is a idea from another node. We'll talk about that here in a second. Um, to navigate around, you can again uh, pan and zoom, uh, or click on any one of these. Uh, you'll see that if you hover over any of the nodes, you get uh, a little bit more information. Um, you'll get a description of what's in that individual page, and you'll get information on the types of links that are connecting this particular idea to the ideas before and the ideas after uh, any one idea. Um, and also, where the nodes at the overview level represent a, a collection of nodes that are closely related, the nodes in here represent an individual content source. So if I go ahead and click on the double click on the two force members, I'll get a page on two force members. So we've got 90 some of these pages in the the whole tool. 
Um, you can read through it. This would be um, information on what two force members are, and then a lot of these pages will have, like I said, worked problems with them. Um, so in here, you can do tell a few things. Again, the top is the basic ideas. As you move down, you follow the arrows down. You get to the later ideas talked about in this particular cluster. So if we start with multi-component assemblies, um, we can see that the links break it up into three subsets. Um, so we've got multi-component assemblies can be broken down into machines, frames, and trusses. Um, some of the other link labels, uh, so we had the sub label here, which indicates that the concept is a subset of the source. Um, the link here between Newton's third law and multi-component assemblies says that the source concept, Newton's third law, is applied in the destination concept. So we find that in analyzing multi-component assemblies, we're often using Newton's third law. And you'll notice that this is a different color, indicating that this particular idea is in a different cluster. Um, so if I click on that, a few things happen. Uh, first of all, I get another cluster that shows up here in the center. You'll also notice the background color changes, and that's because we've moved from <coughs> the multi-component assemblies cluster into the constraints and degrees of freedom cluster. So, and in here I've got a whole other set of ideas that I'm, I'm talking about, but for now let's go back to multi-component assemblies. So each one of these represents a page, and we've got these links showing us how all of these pages are related to one another. Um, so really you can use this tool to navigate the information. If you're on any one idea and you really don't understand it, say you're reading about the method of sections, and I'm saying that the method of sections can only be used for trusses. If you don't understand what trusses are, you can follow that link backwards. Or <coughs> if you are new to the whole topic and you want to learn about all of these ideas, you start at the top and you work your way down. You follow the arrows uh, until you get to the end of the cluster. So in all cases, you're following the arrows back and forth. Um, all of the information is right there. This is the, for any one idea, you follow the one level out arrows to find the most relevant information to the topic you're currently reading about. Um, with that, uh, that's all the information I had to cover with this demo. So I hope you can go to the tool at www.adaptivemap.me.vt.edu. Um, spend some time exploring the tool, seeing how you can use this information to help you uh, in the course. And if you have any problems or questions about the tool, feel free to email me at morej7 at vt.edu. That's M-O-O-R-E-J, the number 7, at vt.edu. Um, so thank you for your time and hope you find this tool useful.